Five side hustles that never fail. What the f 39 to 50% of people under the age of 35 have a side hustle. And those doing online side hustles earn the highest by a mile, which is why it's such a pity that most of them fail. I've tested several side hustles on camera and many more off camera. And that stat you see here is scarily accurate. So let's talk about five side hustles that will never fail and how you can win big. Win big, baby. I know this because I've done them all. All of these side hustles have four characteristics. A low experiment cost, a low maintenance cost, a low customer acquisition cost, and a high profit margin. Now this part here is crucial to understand. Every side hustle has been done successfully somewhere. So each begins its life cycle with a 0% chance of failure. The only thing that will increase your likelihood of failure is how effective you are relative to the side hustle you're doing. Which is why I'm going to help you turn that success dial up as much as possible by helping you understand what you need to succeed in each side hustle. You know, only up to a couple of years ago I felt like I was running out of time to make some extra cash because everybody on YouTube seemed to be a millionaire at 19 from dropshipping and if I were able to go back I'd tell myself someone has to fucking flip the burgers dumbass <laughs> relax don't overthink it all it takes is just one decision to change your life I only came across drop servicing relatively recently when I tested out a few viral TikTok side hustles video to come by the way it's like freelancing except mm -hmm. on steroids and you don't really need to do any work the way it works is simple let's say Susan writes a book on poetry and after releasing in the book, Susan realizes that people much prefer listening to poetry as opposed to reading it. So she needs someone to narrate her book. She goes to acx.com and puts up a job post offering $1,000 for somebody to narrate it. I see the job post and position myself as the best narration professional to get the job done. And Susan likes what she sees and hires me to do the job. I then go to Fiverr to a real professional like Michael and offer him the job for $800. Michael gets his $800, Susan gets her book narrated and I take the difference. Now that example actually happened and I made a $200 profit. Now surprisingly book narration is actually quite a competitive niche so in a while I'll tell you exactly how I would go about doing this in a different niche but first we actually need to talk about what level of drop shipping Drop shipping. Drop shipping. Drop servicing. We're talking about here. The first level is getting to the point where you casually work with a couple of Susans every month and take your money. The next level is when you start working with a few professionals in a particular niche on a regular basis and then scale the amount of clients you get. And the final level is when you build a team of professionals and serve many clients like Susan in various different niches. Now for the context of this video, we're gonna talk about getting between level one and two because level three is just a full blown consultancy business. If I were to turn drop servicing into one of my main side hustles tomorrow, this is what I would do. The niche I would pick would be YouTube thumbnail design because there are so many people that need that service and not enough people doing it effectively. I would then consume every piece of content developed on YouTube about how to get people clicking on thumbnails. I would do that because 80% of thumbnails is psychology, 20% is design. I would then go to Fiverr, find five designers that have a load of good reviews, tell them you have lots of work coming your way and that you would like to use them to design some thumbnails. And before you do anything, negotiate a discount because you're going to be bringing them work. When it comes to finding clients, I would pick five YouTube channels that I want to work with. And without telling them anything, I would then pick three of their thumbnails that are substandard, revamp them, send them on to the YouTuber, and wait for their reply. If your thumbnails are good enough, it will capture their attention and it will make them want to work with you. Depending on how big the YouTuber is, I would charge anywhere from $100 to $300 for each thumbnail. That cost me $10 to design on Fiverr. And I can justify that high profit margin because I know how to get people to click. Before you know it, you're making 10 thumbnails a week, making anywhere from one to three thousand dollars per week most of which is profit now that's just one way of doing it but in general drop servicing has a very low experiment maintenance and customer acquisition costs along with a very favorable profit margin now if you're to start this side hustle you need two things you need the time to deal and build up your customer base and the organization skills to get to the point at which you can monitor and manage many people now if you don't have the appetite to do any of that this definitely isn't a side hustle for you the only way this fails is if you stop. Newsletters have come back from the dead and they are just so f***ing hot right now. Sorry, I'm definitely not cool enough to say that. Here's what you do. Set up an account on Ghost or Substack. Come up with an issue you want to write about and then write about it every week. Tell lots of people about it, charge people a subscription fee or get brands to sponsor every issue. Build it and your audience will come. Nah. <laughs> When you start a newsletter, you really do have to grind out your first thousand subscribers. You'll see later why it's worth it, but for now, let's talk about how you get there. Just for clarity, I stole this strategy from Cody Sanchez, but it works. So, here we go.
Last year I started a crypto newsletter and I had one really effective way of getting people into the funnel. I would write a newsletter like how to get on the whitelist for every NFT project. Wow. I would then go to an NFT subreddit or Facebook group. Yeah, they still exist. Wow. And post a snippet of value from within that newsletter to the group of people that are going to find it useful. Wow. Once they engage with the post, they then see that I've commented underneath it saying check out the full article here and put the link to the newsletter. You build interest and then you hit them with a call to action. Wow. If instead I had done something like this, people would have saw it as spam and they wouldn't have clicked. Now I didn't keep going with the newsletter in the end because I was just spreading myself way too thin and I wanted to focus on my YouTube channel because that's what I'm passionate about. But if I started this newsletter again and the NFT market, let's say, started popping, let's say last year I started talking about all of these really cool NFT picks that people could buy and flip for a lot of profit. Now during that NFT boom, would people serious enough to invest in NFTs pay $100 a month to access those tips? Yeah, they would have. Would they do it now? Probably not. So choose your niche very carefully. Make sure you give insights in a topic that's not as seasonal as something like crypto. Here are some questions that I would highly recommend answering before you do anything along the lines of starting your newsletter. One amazing channel to follow for newsletters is Cody Sanchez. I was at a talk where she spoke recently and she talked about so many people she knew that started making six figures from their newsletter within six to 12 months of starting. So it can be done. Just don't half-ass it. To turn that success style up as much as possible for a newsletter, you need two things. The first thing you need is patience because this is one of those side hustles that will compound over a long period of time. So it will take a bit of time to get that gravy train going, but once it does, the momentum will take you off to the stratosphere. And the second thing you need is expertise on a particular topic. You need to be providing value that nobody else is. So either you're already an expert in your niche or you're on the journey to becoming one. Newsletters have a very low experiment, maintenance, and customer acquisition cost. And if you do yourself you have a 100% profit margin. The only way this fails is if you stop. Print on demand can go either brilliantly or terribly because it's quite new on the market not a lot of people know how to make the most of it. You know you probably know how print on demand works. You design something, you slap it on a product offered by Printify or Printful, you make your sales on Etsy or Shopify and then Printful fulfill your order. The hard part with print on demand is getting people to buy your product without spending any money on marketing and that's the nut we're going to crack here. Sorry guys. And when you figure it out, this is probably the best side hustle for making a lot of money very, very quickly because it has a very low experimentation cost, maintenance cost, and customer acquisition cost, and an extremely high profit margin when you price it the right way. Now I've dabbled a little bit on print on demand myself and I've made a few hundred dollars, but recently I attended a seminar run by ClickBank where they had these experts trying to charge two and a half thousand dollars for the information that I'm about to bestow on you. <coughs> and no, I didn't pay two and a half thousand dollars for this information. I reached out to a guy who attended the seminar and he filled me in. Now I won't mention his name for privacy reasons, but his name begins with an S and rhymes with Peven. For Steven to generate, and I quote here, five figures in his first 30 days of print on demand without spending a single cent on marketing, he has two options. His first option is to sell product designs around a specific trend or event. Now Thanksgiving, Christmas, and Halloween are way too generic and people will already have you beat in this one. But the Queen's death, Corn Boy and Adam Levine's recent failure to be a good husband are examples of where you can beat people to the crowd. Within 10 minutes, you have an Adam Levine themed hoodie on sale for $49.99 with free shipping. Repeat this for 50 trends a year and you have a pretty good side hustle. But it's a bit stressful, so here's option two. The second and more consistent way Stephen can generate a lot of sales is through mass niche blitzing. Stephen goes to Google Sheets and lists out as many niches as he can possibly think of that people will be searching for on Etsy. He then breaks them up into four sections and does a design for each niche. He then slaps these designs on several products. Once he launches these products, he then watches the performance of each niche like a hawk. After a few days, he realizes that out of the 100 niches he launched, 10 of them got over $1,000 in organic sales. So he then scraps the 90 that didn't work and focuses on the 10 that did work. Of the 10 that did work, he then makes sub niches of these niches and continues to launch more and more products. He then repeats this process over the 30 days again and again. Before he knows it, Stephen has identified five to 10 niches on Etsy that nobody is catering for and gets tons of free and organic traffic to his Etsy site where he makes five figures a month. And the best part about this side hustle is that 
the experiment cost for this is literally zero because every sale and every product that you develop and test is fulfilled by Printful or Printify. Just make sure your margin is high enough that you don't make a loss. Now, for somebody that wants to try this, I'd recommend two things. Number one, you already are or you're aspiring to be a pretty good marketer because you need to understand what it takes to develop and iterate on good products that sell. And the second thing you need is a pretty good work ethic to get this off the ground because developing products for a hundred niches will take an awful lot of time at the start. And once you have a good detailed eye on how to monitor each niche, then you should be good to bring it down. And you also need a good eye for detail. Monitoring the performance for a hundred niches isn't easy. Affiliate marketing is probably the most over talked about side hustle on YouTube. So I'm going to try and be a little bit different and pack as much value per minute as I can into this section. In an ideal world, affiliate marketing is when someone buys a product via a link that you gave them, but it's never really as easy as that. Now, I like to break affiliate marketing down into three stages. Finding an offer or product you want to promote generating leads of potential buyers, and then converting those leads. Now, each section requires very different skill sets and requires different time and money requirements. So let's focus up for the next couple of minutes and learn how we can bring these characteristics to a level at which the success dial is turned up as much as possible. Most affiliate marketing campaigns involve running a lot of paid ads that takes a lot of money to get the gravy train up and running, and also a lot of expertise. This is not that. As an affiliate marketer, I want one thing. I want email addresses of a bunch of people that I know are interested in a particular niche or topic, like smoothie diets. The reason I want this is because I can then recurringly target their inboxes with like smoothie diet plans and offers on kale. <laughs> You get the idea. And each time one of these people buy using my link, I get a lovely commission. And if I do this for many niches, I start reading the restaurant menu from left to right instead of right to left. Now, wouldn't that be great? The key to getting these email addresses is TikTok. Because all the TikTok algorithm cares about is serving you the best videos possible, regardless of who you are and how many followers you have, which means that TikTok is the best place where you have the potential to go viral. So I would start a TikTok page specifically about smoothie diets. And I would create tons of content about smoothie diets on my TikTok page, posting three to five times a day. If you don't have time to do that, pay somebody on Fiverr or Upwork to do that for you. Once you get a couple of viral videos and enough people visiting your profile, you then hit them with an offer that they cannot refuse. Provide that value in exchange for their email address. And once you get their email address, you then enroll them in your convert kit email sequence and then hit them with offers of products that you got from Max Bounty or ClickBank. My experience is that you get a two to 5% conversion rate depending on how good your email sequence is. And when you take into account the size of the numbers that you can get on TikTok, that funnel filters down to quite a large number of people. Now, to be completely transparent, I actually tried this side hustle in one of my recent videos and ironically, I stopped. I stopped because I was doing it as an experiment and I didn't give it the time or attention to detail that was required to get a viral video. And looking back, the TikTok videos I was creating were crap and they were recycled content. So if you think this Site hustle is for you, make sure you study what it takes to get a viral video on TikTok. Start making them and have those email addresses funneling through your money making machine. Rinse and repeat. And if you are going to go through with this, I definitely recommend checking out Chad Bartlett's channel. That's where I got this idea from. Finally, we have the Rolls Royce of site hustles, and that's starting a YouTube channel. Creators are going to be the next era of billionaires. So whether you like it or not, you should be paying attention to this. In fact, that survey we referenced at the very start of the video has YouTube as its own category category for side hustles and you have more people making 10k plus a month than you do 1k plus a month and if you don't like being in front of the camera that's perfectly okay instead of starting a personal youtube channel you can start a faceless youtube automation channel <clears throat> more on that in a sec Let's talk about the various levels of YouTube. The first level is getting to the point where you're monetized on YouTube and you have around 100 true fans. The next level is when you start getting brand deals. Hire a couple of people and scale your production that little bit more. And the final level is where you use your channel as a launch pad to build other brands off of your YouTube brand. Now getting to that final level is a bit of a slog and it will take something special to get there. But getting somewhere between level one and two doesn't sound too bad to me. Now, why are we saying YouTube specifically? here. YouTube has been around for a long time and it's not going anywhere. And other than maybe podcasting, it's the best way to build a loyal audience. And a loyal audience is what you truly need to monetize it. Oh, and YouTube is also moving into podcasts. <laughs> now, how can you avoid failing with this YouTube side hustle? Here are the biggest reasons YouTubers fail. Now, I'm going to focus on three of them specifically. Even though YouTube is a massive opportunity, it is hyper competitive. And the best thing someone can do when it comes to starting a YouTube channel is understanding exactly what audience they want to 
speak to. If you can find the crossover between the videos that you want to make and the videos your audience wants to see, you'll grow incredibly fast and you'll do it for a long time. Now this can be quite difficult, so to help you with that, I'm gonna link down below a Google Sheet that I use to help understand what audience I wanna to speak to. You better sit down for this. The average YouTube channel takes 156 videos to get monetized. Now I could tell you that you have to be patient, but when you're starting out on YouTube and you're learning, patience isn't exactly the thing that will help you create loads of videos and learn about what type of videos you want to create. So what I'd say instead is, Commit to making 100 videos in your first year of YouTube. And there's a good reason for doing this. To succeed on YouTube, you need to persist and you need to iterate. I think I might've seen a vidIQ video where they said 0.5% of YouTube channels end up getting monetized. And you might think, how the hell am I gonna be in that 0.5%? What if I told you that it was all about being persistent? 75% of YouTube channels quit before making 10 videos. And 75% of those channels quit before making 50 videos. And 75% of those channels quit before making 100 videos. So if you decide today to make two videos every week for the next year, you're already in the top 1.5% of channels. And if you make every single video 1% better than the last, due to compounding, you're gonna be three times better than you were a year ago. And over a long period of time, you're gonna grow exponentially. Now, if you're at all interested in how much money my channel is making, alongside how to maximize your YouTube earnings, you might wanna check out this video here. I hope you got as much value out of this video as I did making it. See you in the next one. Slam.